hearty welcome to all the ATV education viewers. In this episode, let us discuss about the formation of uniform plane wave equations. Okay, for both conducting media and plane media, like uh, free space media. Okay, now let uh, let me discuss the Maxwell's equations in their final forms. We have got four Maxwell's equations. The one from MPS law is del cross H is equals to J bar plus dou D bar by dou D. Next, this is from Ampere's law. Okay, this is from Ampere's law. Now, let us uh, write the equation for process law. The Maxwell's equation is del dot D bar is equals to rho V. Next, the, this is from process law. Now, from Faraday's law, the Maxwell's equation in the point form is del cross E bar is equals to minus D B bar by D D. And lastly, del dot B bar is equals to 0. This is law of conservation of flux. Okay. Now, these are the four laws, Maxwell's equations in their final forms, in point forms. Okay, now let me drive the wave equations first. First, free space. Now, before going to the wave equations, let me give you some auxiliary equations in terms of J bar, E bar, and B bar. So, the auxiliary relations are B bar is equal to mu into H bar, where mu is the permeability of free space. Next, J bar is equal to sigma into E bar. Here, J is the current density and E is the electric field intensity. And lastly, we have got D bar is equal to epsilon into E bar. So, where D bar is the electric flux density and E bar is the electric field intensity. So, these are the supplementary equations which we are going to use. Now, let us start with the first wave equation which is in terms of E. Now, uh, the same three equations in terms of their point forms, in terms of their point forms and the dot notation is, now what is meant by dot notation is simply one derivative dou by dou t is represented with a dot over the respective vector. Similarly, dou square t, dou square by dou t square of that particular vector is represented with a double dot over the vector. So, if a double dot on its top indicates that it is dou square by dou t square of that particular vector and if I am having only one single dot it implies dou by dou t that is the first derivative of that particular vector. So what I mean what is the example I can give you is if at all if I am having dou e by dou e bar by dou t okay so this I can replace it with e dot in dot notation. Similarly dou square e by dou t square simply can be replaceable with e double dot. So, this is how we can represent the vector in their respective dotted notation. Okay, now let me write these expressions in the respective dotted notations. So, j bar can be replaceable with sigma e and dou d bar by dou t can be replaced with the from this equation epsilon c dou d bar is epsilon into e bar. So, dou d bar by dou t can be replaced with dou by dou t of epsilon into e. And since epsilon is a constant, I can throw epsilon out. So the, the exact replacement of this term would become epsilon into e dot. So the same equation I can write it as simply j bar is sigma e plus epsilon into e dot. Okay. Next, the rho v is, we, we don't have any replacement for rho v. Now coming to this, uh, what is uh, b bar in terms of h actually it is mu into h. So replacing b with mu h, I can replace this term with simply minus mu into h dot. Mu into h dot. Okay. So these are the three equations which we are going to use generally. Now let us start the derivation from the first equation. Now applying curl on both sides. So if I apply curl on both sides, what happens? del cross del cross h okay so if i curl, apply curl on the lh or lhs then it is del cross of del cross of h that should be equals to now for free space for free space sigma is zero that is the conductivity of free space is zero so the first term of this equation will become zero now let me call this equation as some one okay so if this equation is called as one and it is two and it is three okay so now if i am applying curl on both sides of equation one the LHS is going to be disturbed. 
Now coming to RHS, since this term is 0, so sigma into E is you know, 0. So we are remained with what? Epsilon into E dot. So it is simply del cross of epsilon E dot. And since uh, epsilon is a constant value and E dot is the derivative with respect to time and delta is a function of the coordinates x, y, z, I can write, I can exchange this. That is, it is going to become epsilon into del cross E dot. Del cross E dot. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the RHS of this equation. So, now uh, what is the, what is the LHS? It is del cross of del cross of L. A, A, del cross del cross H. Now, we have a vector identity del cross del cross H is equals to del of del dot h minus del square h okay so the expansion of this curl, double curl del cross del cross h is equals to del of del dot h minus del square h okay so if i uh, if i go, go for this using the using the law del dot b bar equal to 0 this uh, term can become 0 so uh, so the expanding this here what do i get is del of del dot h i can represent with 0 why because del dot b is equal to 0 by law of conservation of flux so z, del of 0 minus del square h is equal to yeah now if you observe equation number uh, uh, if you observe the rhs what is it it is del cross of e dot so we know that del cross e is minus mu into h dot so what how can i get del cross e dot from del cross e just on both sides you differentiate it with, with, with respect to time once so if i differentiate del cross e once with the time i am going to get del cross e dot so since i need to differentiate on both sides minus mu into dou by dou t of h dot i can replace it with h double dot so it is what nothing but minus mu into h double dot okay so this double dot is obtained because of double differentiating this or differentiating uh, h dot with t once again so differentiating h dot with t once again is as simple as saying as h double dot so it, this is going to become mu into h in h of double dot so on this side this is anyhow zero so minus del square h and minus and minus it's cancelled so you are having now del square h is equals to mu into h of course here we have got one epsilon also mu into uh, here you, you can take this uh, replacement as epsilon h double dot. So this is mu epsilon into h double dot. Now let us call this equation number four. Let's call this equation number four. On similar lines, uh, we applied a curl for equation number one. So on similar lines, if I apply curl on both sides of equation number three, we get a we arrive at a similar equation in terms of e. So I can uh, I can write the same I can apply the same uh, analysis and I can arrive at another equation in terms of e as simply del square e is equals to mu epsilon into e double dot. So simply mu epsilon into e double dot. So this is the, this is the equation wave equation in terms of e. So the wave equation in terms of h is equation number 4 which is del square h is equals to mu epsilon into h double dot and the wave equation in terms of e is del square e is equals to mu epsilon into e double dot. So this is the wave equation in terms of e and this is in terms of h. Now let us derive an equation between e and h using the Maxwell's equations. Now before going to the relationship between e and h let me explain you what is uniform plane wave. So, if any vector E either E or H, it will be having three components. One is E equals to E X into I bar plus E Y into J bar plus E Z into K bar. Okay. Now, uh, if this wave, let me say, is propagating again, let me say Z direction. And if this is qualifying the component, the conditions of a uniform plane wave, the first and foremost condition it should satisfy is the component of E in the direction of propagation should be zero. That means, for example, if this is if this uh, E bar is propagating in let's say Z direction, so obviously E Z should be zero. Similarly, if it's propagating in Y direction, then E Y should be zero. So in whichever direction it is propagating, so in such direction there should not be any component. So that for the for uh, simplicity, let me assume that it is propagating in Z direction. Okay, so the basic condition is obviously E z equals to 0. So if it were to be a uniform plane wave traveling in z direction, then E z equals to 0. That's the first condition. 
Now, what is the second condition? It should it should not be varying in terms of the remaining two variables. That means if it is propagating in so we assume that it is propagating in that direction. So the first condition it should be satisfying is e z equals to zero. The second condition it should satisfy is both do by do x of any uh, any components and do by do y of any component should be equals to zero. That means it should not be varying with respect to x and y in any of the three components of E. That's what is the meaning of uniform plane wave. So how can I unify a uniform plane wave now? Any wave which does not have a component in the direction of propagation and does not vary with respect to the remaining two coordinates is called as a uniform plane wave. Now let us as you let us uh, let us uh, substitute these conditions, apply these conditions to the wave equations. Okay. So for, for the first Michael's equation we have that is nothing much del cross, of course we are considering the three space, so sigma is zero. So del cross h is equals to simply now let us expand this. So if I expand this curl, what do I get? Expanding this curl. So if I am taking the Cartesian coordinate system for expanding this curl, so you will be getting i bar, j bar, k bar. Of course, in some textbooks they have written it as ax, ay, and az. So for the reciprocity, I am making i bar, j bar, k bar. Okay, and uh, it is basically dou by dou x here. So dou by dou x by condition of uniform value is zero. So I am simply substituting zero. Next dou by dou y is also zero, and dou by dou z. Okay, dou by dou z. And uh, here uh, ex and ey and what is the other component of that I told since it, it should be a uniform plane wave ez is equal to zero. So I am replacing ez with zero. So this is the expansion of the curl del cross h. Okay. So of course uh, here it is hx and hy. So hx and hy and that should be equals to epsilon into now e bar is ex i bar plus ey bar plus ez k bar. So I can write it as epsilon into do ex by do x into I mean do ex by dou t into i bar plus dou e y by dou t into j bar and of course this is a zero because e, e z we are taking it as to be equal to zero okay so here hx also is equal to zero i mean hz is equal to zero okay now let us expand this curl on this side and equal to the rh so if i expand what do i get i bar into what is the cofactor of i bar this the matrix between these two Okay, so that is uh, zero h y h y dou by dou z and zero. So for this, the cofactor the cofactor is zero into zero is minus zero minus of dou by dou z of h y. So I can write as minus dou h y by dou z is equals to epsilon into dou e x by dou t. Okay, now let us call this equation number one. Now. Okay, similarly, if I observe the cofactor and compare the cofactors of j bar, so what is the cofactor of j bar? Minus j into the cofactor it contains of these two. It is uh, minus do hz by do x minus do hx by do z is equals to epsilon into do e y by do t. And you the equation number 2. Okay. Now, if we observe equation 1. Both hy and ex should be functions of z and t. Now, why am I coming to this conclusion? Is now had hy hy is not a function of z, this is going to become zero. And had ex not a function of t, this uh, r is going to become zero. So, for both the two terms on LSS and RHS to exist, both hy should be a function of z and t. And similarly, uh, both uh, ex and ex also should be a function of z and t. Similarly, here hx and ey, these two functions should be a function of z and t. So now, let me assume uh, a component of hy like this. So let uh, hy is equals to some function. Let me take uh, some f1 of z minus v0 into t. Now, why am I taking this v0 into t? v0 t is the velocity. Into time will velocity into time will produce distance. So I cannot take away z. With, I cannot take z minus of v0, or I cannot take z minus of t because the with both the both cannot be the both should be the same components. So z is a distance, and v0 into t also is a distance. So by the dimensions, 
both should be distances. So, I am replacing this uh, second coordinate with a distance by v0 into t. So, z0, z minus v0 into t, it, it will represent a distance. Okay. Now, what is v0 here? v0 is the velocity of light. So, velocity of light is given in terms of uh, in terms of uh, epsilon naught and mu naught as v0 is equal to minus root of r by mu naught into epsilon naught. Okay. Now, let us substitute this function here. So, if I substitute this function, uh, what is uh, LHS here? LHS is 2HY by dou z. So, from 1, okay, from equation 1, uh, what is our RHS, LHS here? Uh, dou by dou z of F1 of z minus V0 t is equal to epsilon into dou E x by dou t. Okay. Now, from this, what is the derivative of z, uh, this function actually? Simply, uh, since it, z is not having any other functions involved, so it is simply replaceable with the f1 dash, where f1 dash is the derivative of f, so f1, so it, uh, which implies uh, f1 dash of z minus v0 t is equal to uh, here, uh, of course with the minus sign here, it is uh, dou epsilon into dou e x by dou t. Okay. Now, from this, from this equation, I can write it as uh, dou e x by dou t is equal to epsilon, 1 by epsilon, 1 by epsilon into f1 dash of z minus v0 t, 1 by z minus, uh, z0, z minus v0 into t, and from this, obviously e x would be, of course with the minus sign, e x would be simply integral with the minus sign, of course, integral 1 by epsilon naught into with the minus here integral f1 dash of z minus v naught t into dt why because this is a derivative with respect to dt so if it is transpose at the opposite side it is going to become dt here so if you integrate this term with respect to t times then it is simply e x is equals to uh, minus 1 by epsilon naught by epsilon naught into uh, now the integral of this term would be I mean here dash of this so integral of f1 dash is integral the same function so it is f1 of z minus v naught into t into now uh, by differentiating by integrating this term the integral of v naught t is 1 by v naught so I can replace it like this uh, it is 1 by v naught okay so here we are having uh, v naught can be written as 1 by v naught can be written as from this formula mu naught into epsilon naught. So from this e x, of course uh, e x is equals to minus uh, 1 by v naught is simply mu naught into epsilon naught divided by epsilon naught into f1 of z minus v naught t. Okay. Now from this equation I can write. Uh, e x is equal to now mu naught 1 1 epsilon naught under root and epsilon naught we will be cancelling so you are going with minus under root of mu naught by epsilon naught into f1 is nothing but h1 so it is h1 if you call this equation number 1 I mean 3 okay now on a similar analysis by taking equation number 2 and uh, assuming uh, hx as another function f2 okay we can easily arrive at another conclusion like this. So e y is equal to uh, plus root of mu naught by epsilon naught into h z. Okay, h h x. Okay. So uh, you got this equation number. Okay. Now squaring on both sides of equation number three and four and adding LHS to LHS and RHS to RHS. What we have, what we get now, e x square plus e y square. This is our LHS square on 3 and 4. Okay. Next, that should be equal to, if, since we are adding, the R is also get added. So, under root of mu naught by epsilon naught when squared becomes mu naught by epsilon naught simply. So, mu naught by epsilon naught okay, into h x square plus h y square. Now, since it is a unique of the we assume that e z is 0 and h z is 0. Okay. So, a e x square plus e y square will represent obviously mod of e square. Okay, mod of e square is equals to mu naught by epsilon naught into mod of h square. Okay, and 
uh, here mod of e by h whole square is equals to mu naught by epsilon naught implies uh, e by h is equals to under root of mu naught by epsilon naught. Now, what does it signify? Signify e is measured in volt per meter and h is measured in ampere per meter. Okay, so volt per meter divided by ampere per meter will give us volt per ampere. Because meter and meter is cancelled on the denominators on both the numerator and denominator. So uh, E will be amp volt and H will be ampere. So volt per ampere represents a impedance. So this impedance we call it as intrinsic impedance of free space. Why free space? Because we are taking knots. So knots indicate mu naught is for free space and epsilon naught also is for free space. So this E by H is the impedance of free space. So the intrinsic impedance offered by the free space we are referring it as eta naught. So eta naught is the intrinsic impedance offered by free space. Okay. Now let me derive this value. Now we know that mu naught is 4 pi into 10 power minus 10 and 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 into 10 to the power of 9. Okay. So if at all if I wanted to write 1 by epsilon naught, so what should, what should I do? 1 by epsilon naught is this 4 pi will throw it out to the RHS. So, since it is in the denominator, it will go to the numerator. So, numerator may, if it is going into numerator, what happens? 9 into 4 pi will give you 36 pi. 36 pi into the power of 9. So, 1 by epsilon naught I can replace with, uh, 1 by epsilon naught simply I can replace it with 36 pi into the power of 9. Okay. Into 4 pi, uh, mu naught is 4 pi into the power of minus 7. Okay, 100 root of. Okay, so we are having 10 to the power of 2 here. Now, under root of 36 is 6 into pi into pi, pi square. So, pi square under root is pi into 10 square is 10 into 4 is 2. Okay, so uh, we are in, in total, it is 6 into 2 is 12, 12 tens 120, 120 into pi is 125. So, you are having eta naught value as 125 ohms. So, the intrinsic impedance offered by free space eta naught is 120 pi ohms. Okay. So, if anybody asks you what is the intrinsic impedance of free space, so you should be in a position to say that its value is 120 pi ohms. Okay. So, next class, we are going to discuss about uh, the baby, baby equations for any conducting medium and dielectric medium, and if possible, sinusoidal variations. Thank you for watching this video and uh, if you find that this uh, information is informative, please subscribe to our channel like the video.